Hey there everyone, we are in Philippians again, Philippians chapter 2 verses 1 to 11. In some ways, uh, when you read this, it will be really familiar to you. And in some senses, this passage is one of the most deep and complex and rich theological sections of the whole Bible, not even just the New Testament. It talks about you know, Jesus being in very nature God. He is God. He has always been God. But uh, he took on the nature of a servant and became nothing and humbled himself. So people have thought about this for ages and ages. How can the God, the creator of the universe, the ground of all being, then become a human being with flesh and limitations? How is he... Jesus fully God and fully man at the same time. There's been like fights about this. There's been church divisions about this. There's been like the whole starting of a whole stream of Christianity around this. It's so deep and complex. But on the other hand, my friends, the passage we're reading today is so darn simple. It's so simple it can be summarized just in one sentence or one kind of idea. Really what this whole passage, verses 1 to 11, is saying is this. The Christians... Those people who claim to follow Christ, those people who say that they are followers of Jesus, they should look like Christ. They should act like Jesus. It says, rather in humility value others above yourself, not looking to your own interests for the interests of others. In your relationship with one another, you should have the same mindset as Christ Jesus. The passage is saying something very simple. That is, in your mind and in your heart and in everything that you do, you should be like Christ Jesus. The problem has been, my friends, it's easy to understand, but throughout the history of Christianity, it has not been easy to do. I remember hearing a story of Mahatma Gandhi, a horrible story about Mahatma Gandhi. Apparently when he was first kind of on his spiritual quest, he, he loved all the stuff that he read about Jesus. He read the Sermon on the Mount and loved what Jesus said in the Sermon about, about loving your enemies and about and you know, blessed being the poor. Um, and all that kind of stuff. And so he decided he was going to check out a church. He went to the local church that was run by white British people. As he went to get in the door, a white British man stopped him and said, Ah, oh, sorry mate, you can't come in here. I think you'll find a church that's more appropriate for your kind down the street. And he said, What, what do you mean for, for my kind? Surely we're, we're all equal when we come into the church, right? He said, Yeah, we're all equal, but there's a church that might be better for your kind just down the street. This is the kind of thing that led Mahatma Gandhi to say, I like your Christ, but I don't like your Christians. Your Christians don't look anything like your Christ. My friends, it's an easy thing to wrap your head around this passage is saying in your mind, in your heart, in everything you do, in the way that you act towards people, you should be like Christ Jesus. But it is a much more difficult thing to do. Now, what does it mean when I say in your mind be like Christ Jesus? We should have the same mindset as Christ Jesus. Well, when I was growing up, the way that I thought about being like Christ all had to do with, I guess, my own kind of like staying away from sinful things, I suppose. I thought being like Christ was not swearing, it was not drinking, it was not, you know, sexing, it was not having, like, watching bad stuff on TV or, like, listening to bad music. That's what being like Christ was all about. Now, all that kind of stuff is important. But here, what is being like Christ about? I'm going to read it to you again. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourself. Not looking out to your own interests, but the interest of others in your relationships with one another. You should have the same mindset as Christ Jesus. What is it about, my friends? Being like Christ? It's always about your relationships with people. He says, in your relationships, you should value others above yourself. That is, you should see other people as worthy, more worthy even than yourself of honour and praise and dignity and love and your own generosity, my friends. That's what it means to be Christ-like. It is about the way that you treat people. I remember hearing a great story. Um, I guess this is the opposite story of the one I was telling you about Mahatma Gandhi. It's to do with uh, Bishop Desmond Tutu. Um, there was a practice in apartheid South Africa um, that whenever black people 
would come across white people walking along the street. It would be the job of the black people to step off into the gutter so that the white people could walk past um, you know, without having to get in the gutter. And this happened all the time to Desmond when he was walking with his mum down the street. And then one day, they came across a white man who was walking towards them. And just as Desmond was about to jump into the gutter, he notices that the white man steps into the gutter. And as he steps into the gutter, the white man tips his hat to Desmond Tutu and his mum and says, Good day to you fine people. And then he jumps on the other side. And Desmond is shocked. He says, who, who was that man? He says to his mum, Who was that man who jumped into the gutter for us, that white man? And his mum says, oh, That man's the, the local priest. And he knows that in Christ all people are one. And so he treats people like Jesus would treat people. And Desmond Tutu says from that moment on, all he wanted to do to be was an Anglican priest just like that man. Because if that's what he's like, that's what Jesus is like. My friends, don't you think that is exactly what is going on here? Rather in humility, value others above yourself. It's Christ-like, isn't it? who, being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage, but made himself nothing, taking on the very nature of the servant being made in human likeness. My friends, that is humility, and that is what it looks like to be Christ-like. Are you following me? There's this great quote, and it comes like basically directly from this passage about that kind of humility, that Christ-like humility. Um, did you notice that there's two times that Paul says, in very nature, in that little poem about Jesus? The first one is verse 6. He says, who, being in very nature, is God. So there's one very nature of Jesus. His very nature is God, but he says very nature again. Rather, he made himself nothing, taking on the very nature of a servant. So at the one and the same time, Jesus is in very nature God, and he is in very nature a servant. What is that telling us about Jesus and humility? C.S. Lewis puts it like this. He says, humility is not thinking less of yourself. You know, that's, that's the way we think about humility, right? It's beating up on yourself. I'm such an idiot. Oh, man, look at me. I'm such a sinful, horrible person. No, no. C.S. Lewis says, this is the poem about Jesus, right? Also, it says, humility is not thinking less of yourself. It is thinking of yourself less. Do you get it? Jesus is in very nature God. He's not, he's not, it's not like he's unaware that he is God. He has always been God. He will always be God. He is of supreme value and importance and he knows that. He doesn't think less of himself. He just doesn't think about himself that much at all. He thinks about himself less because he is always thinking and working for the benefit of others. There's this moment uh, that I want to draw your attention to just as we close. In verse 4 it says, in the NIV, it says, Not looking to your own interest, but each of you to the interest of others. Now, you guys know that Philippians was originally written in Greek, and that what we're reading is an English translation. Uh, do you know what the original kind of Greek says in, in, without being translated for us? Um, it goes like this. Not looking out for your own blank, there's no word there, but each of you to the blank of the others. Are you getting me? How cool is that? They don't put interest in there, they don't put anything in there. What's Paul saying? You are not to look out for your own, what? Put something in there. Your own interest, your own prestige, your own celebrity, your own wealth, but rather you are to look out for the own prestige, dignity, wealth, worth of others. Put something in there. Not to look after your own blank, but to look after the blank of others. That, my friends, is the mindset of Christ. Amen.